In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use the ASA's SLA monitor and ICMP reachability functions to take advantage of a redundant ISP uh, connected to your ASA. Um, so basically, um, as an example, when you have a backup internet, a main and a backup internet service, if a fault exists on the main one, you can automatically fail over to the redundant one by installing routes into your routing table that are tracked. Um, which are based on SLA monitor functions. So uh, my setup, I'll show you quickly. Um, I've got two interfaces, and ISP one and ISP two. Um, one goes off to one ISP. This is a lab environment. It's not a real environment. Um, just to mention, uh, one goes off to one router, and the other goes off to one router. So just show you that I can reach those routers. One and ping one. So they're both my uh, ISP simulation routers, um, and I've also got a third route acting as a, uh, a host on the internet, um, simulating a host on the internet rather. Anything, anything can pass the ISP routers. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to create an SLA first so what we're going, to, we're going to straight away so they monitor and then we're going to specify an object ID of 10 and then we're going to specify the type now this command's a bit uh, silly really because it's the only command you can specify in this configuration mode uh, so what we're saying is we're saying the type is echo and the protocol is going to be IP ICMP echo and our target address will be in this instance say the eight 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 that's what my simulation host is set up as in real life it's probably be better to use the next hop along from the ISP router um, and then you're going to specify the interface from which to send out these ICMP echoes which would be my ISP one and and then you can say you get all these commands different commands here so you can just specify different aspects and attributes of the ICMP packet uh, we just say frequency, you can send it every five seconds, so this is measured in seconds, so we'll say it sends it every five seconds. Okay, so that's done, so now we're going to specify the SLA schedule. Uh, schedule 10 and life will be forever, so we want it to ping forever. And we want the start time to be now. So it's going to start right now, as soon as I enter that command. Next, we're going to create the tracker, which is what the root references to. So the track references the SLA monitor, and the root references back to the tracker. So the command is track1, so that will be the tracker ID. And then after the RTR, you specify the object, the SLA object ID, which we, spe we specified up here. And the end point is reachability. Okay, so now we have a tracker. We're going to install the routes to the routing table. So root through ISP one zero zero. That's short for just saying zero to zero to zero to zero zero to zero to zero to zero. Um, and we're going to say it's going to go via ninety nine eighty eight one, which is the ISP root of one. And we can say that has a. This is very important. This administrative distance when you're setting these up. So this is one. And we're going to track referencing one. One here. Okay, so track that. So that is now in our routing table. And next, we're going to specify the backup route through ISP2, which is the same. But obviously, it goes through the ISP2 router. And the administrative distance is going to be higher than that of the route for the primary line. Okay, so if I do a show route now, I've got my ISP1 route installed in there. So basically, if we do a show track command, we can see that the reachability is up, so it's getting to my target address of which was 8.8.8.8, uh, so which is why that route is now installed in that routing table. If, for example, 8.8.8.8 was, was to go down through ISP1 interface, then this would be uninstalled from the routing table, and the uh, backup route would be installed. So let me now create our NAT rules for the. This is this is important. Not a lot of people, well, when they're setting up this uh, SLA monitor, they don't know the correct NAT rules to use. And I don't know if this is 100% correct, but this is what works for me. So inside interface to this is by, by the way, this is not auto NAT, object NAT. This is on the um, 
this is going into our first section of NAT. If you, I'm going to make a video on that soon about NAT. Um, so we're going to go through our ISP1 interface and we're going to go source, dynamic, and we want to say our inside hosts uh, are going through going to pat onto the interface and then you want to set up the same command for ISP2 source dynamics so it's basically the same so host interface so as you if you don't know already NAT happens after routing takes place so if you're wondering why this would wouldn't conflict or whatever uh, it's because the routing takes place first so when so if we read this NAT statement out so NAT when the conditions of inside interface um the destination is going to be ISP1 interface, so the egress interface will be ISP1 interface, which will happen if the routing table has our default route pointing out of our ISP1 interface, which it does at the moment. Um, translate <coughs> the source address of the packet to our interface, our outside interface address of ISP1. Uh, the same again applies for the other statement. If the if the conditions, if the ingress interface is inside and the egress interface is ISP2, and the ISP2 route is installed in the table, then all will be fine. So now we're going to test our functionality. So now I should be able to ping our host 8.8.8.8. Yep. And if we do a trace route to 8.8.8.8, rather, you'll see it's going via our ISP route one, and then via that. That's the uh, the address that's linked to our ISP route one's outside interface. So it's the on the I'm basically it got a router simulating the host address the 8.8.8 .8 .8, and that is one of the interfaces on that router. So now for example if I take a cable out of the the ISP one router we should see our Tracker go down, reachability is up. Let's have a look at our route, see if it's failed over yet. So, yes, now we can see that our route has failed to 88.77.66.1 and it's going through ISP2. So, if I ping 8.8.8.8, .8 I can still get to it. And this time, if we do a trace route, it's going via 88.77.66.1 and via 11.22.33.1. But if we scroll back up, I'll show you the result last time. It was going via 22.33.44.1, which is obviously a different interface on that router I told you about. Hope you found this video informative. Please, if you have any feedback, leave it in the comments below. And remember to subscribe. Thank you.